Hello everyone and welcome to another ServiceNow Express video blog post on the concept of the REST APIs. So when you want to have the conversation regarding integrations with your ServiceNow instance outside and beyond the simple import of an XLS file or email in with an inbound email action, the answer to your problems is the REST API. This is a programmable API that allows for create, read, update and delete functionality on any of your tables and records in ServiceNow. So how does this REST API work and how does it apply to my ServiceNow Express instance? Well, the ServiceNow Express instance takes inbound only REST API calls, meaning although it can't make calls outbound, it can take in calls that will simulate the identical functionality of pushing. And what I mean by that is, let's pretend you created a new record in ServiceNow and you wanted to duplicate that record in an external system you have. Although ServiceNow can't push or make a post call, what you can very easily do is have a script do a get and read from the table, read those new records, and then through that scripted simple solution, push the data over into your other system. Other system. So the idea is that you have your ServiceNow instance here to the left, and we've got sort of a fence in between, a barrier between your existing platform, be it SolarWinds, Salesforce, Jira, and your ServiceNow instance. So it's going to be up to you, since the REST APIs are available and inbound only, to script that, so to speak, middleman communication channel to act as a conference call between the two units. So you could use any REST-capable programming language like Python, Ruby, Java, JavaScript, anything that can support those web service calls. And we have great examples for the basics of those programming languages available on our wiki documentation. But the idea is that when you're calling, maybe you want to get data from your outside system, push it into ServiceNow. All you need to do is write that scripted solution that pulls using the APIs on your third-party program or application, and then pushes into ServiceNow using a post. At the same time, you could pull your data from ServiceNow with a GET and then push it back into your third-party program like SolarWinds or Salesforce or Jira using their own respective API sets. So things such as updating, deleting records, creating new records, all that create, read, update, delete functionality is available to you due to the fact that for create, we can do a POST. For read, we can do a GET. For update, we can do a PUT. And for delete, we can do a delete. So easy web service calls that you can formulate using the REST APIs to have that integrated and dynamic integ functionality. So let's head back into my instance and take a look at these examples as it applies. So I'm going to head and over and open up my open instance. You can see I've got one that's to be updated via REST. I've got one that's to be deleted via REST. But let's start with the simplest form of REST calls which is simply doing a get on my incident table. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to navigate to my advanced REST client. And let me zoom in here so it's easier for us to view. So this advanced REST client is going to allow me, it's just a Chrome extension, that's going to allow me to do these REST calls against my ServiceNow instance. So you can see here I've got my instance defined with the URL API now table incident. So for the full list of the URL syntax for how to formulate these REST calls is available in the ServiceNow Express documentation if you search for REST. But for our first example, we were talking, how do I read my data? How do I pull it out using REST from ServiceNow? So that would be a GET call. We can simply pull a GET on any table name. So here I'm going to do incident. And I'll go ahead and send that in. And we're passing the headers of uh, application JSON for the accept headers and you'll see we get a status 200 OK meaning that we successfully sent in that REST call of GET. So what you can see here is we have resulting 239 records that were found basically incidents in our system. Each record is going to be listed by its own index with its own key value pair where the key is the field name in ServiceNow and the value is going to be the value that field has. So you could see this here is my incident number 0010344 and so on. So really easy to using a get pull out that data from ServiceNow and then to be able to parse it out and push it wherever you need it to go.
So in the next example, let's actually add more complicated logic to this get. Maybe we don't want over 200 records to be found. Maybe we only wanted an isolated retrieval. Well, we can easily have dynamic get calls. Let me open up this one I have saved here, where you can add your own sys parameter queries in. So in this case, I'm adding onto my get call the sysparm query that the sys created by field, so the user who created the record, has to be employee. This means when I run this get call now, it's actually filtering down on those over 200 records, and it's only pulling back the ones where my cre sys created by field has the value employee. And you'll see I just have 78 records now. And if I scroll down to the sys created by field on every single one of those records, you can see that the value of that is employee as I queried. So the next item on our list is we're going to talk about post actually creating and putting records in the ServiceNow instance. So I'm going to head back to my saved list and let's take a look at this post example. So this is a bit different in that you're actually going to put in a payload. So under the payload, all you need to do is put in, in brackets here, in single quotes, your field name, quote, colon, your value you want for that field, and then comma separated, any other key value pair to set any fields you'd like. So in this case, I'm writing to the incident table. I'm doing a post to create a new record, and I'm going to set the field short description to create it through REST post, and I'm going to set the category to software. So when I go ahead and send this in, you can see we have a 201 response, which means it has been created. If I head back to my ServiceNow instance, what you're going to see is I'm going to reload my view, and just like that, we have that 00.10.367 new incident created, which was created through REST post. What you can also note is the category has successfully been set to software. So in my payload here, if I scroll up, you'll see category was set to software. So the next line of functionality is updating existing records. So on a note of syntax, to update an existing record, you're going to need to know the sys ID of that record. So if you want a mass update, you simply have to script a get, pull all the sys IDs, and then iterate through them with the loop to do your put to update or maybe delete to delete. But we'll get into delete later. So let's take a look at this put command, which is what you do to update existing records. So you can see, now I've got my URL set as before, but I've added the sys ID of the record I'm going to update. So this ID, sys ID, happens to correlate to this to be updated via REST ticket. You can see my category currently is set to inquiry slash help. So I'm going to do a put, and I'm going to simply send in the category as having the new value of software. So when I send this, we're going to let this load. You'll see I have a 200 OK. And when I refresh my list here, just like that, this updated via REST one, has been set to software category as well. So for updating your records, very easy through programmatic integration. The third and final piece of functionality is deleting records. So you can see I've got this record here to be deleted via REST. So I'm going to come back in, just quickly open up my delete call, and all it has is the same table name that you're deleting a record from with the sys ID of the record you're going to delete. So keep in mind, you don't need to know, you know beforehand exactly what all your sys IDs are. You could programmatically simply do a get, parse out all the sys IDs, and per whatever logic you'd like, pre-populate dynamically new delete URIs that are then going to get resolved and delete the re corresponding record. So in my case, I'm deleting that record I wanted to delete. I'm going to go ahead and press send, and for this one, if it's successful, it'll give me a 204 no content. So I head back to my list, I refresh that list, and you can see just like that, that issue for to be deleted via REST has been deleted via REST. So what's great about this REST API and functionality is it really means the, it's the sky's the limit. If you want to completely do a rebranding of the way your users put in tickets and have it completely something you've built through web forms, you can absolutely do so. And just in the back end, have all those web forms send REST post calls into ServiceNow. So making a customer user experience maybe beyond the service catalog that's branded, maybe even in line with your corporate website, you can absolutely do that. Have it simply send REST post calls 
to generate those records in ServiceNow. At the same time, maybe you wanted to pull data out of ServiceNow and display it to your users on your own corporate website in a different manner. You can just use a get call then and programmatically and easily have communication in and out of ServiceNow for the create, read, update, and delete functionality. And that's through the REST APIs available in ServiceNow Express.